Hi folks, I'm Josh. Welcome to my shop. Today is June 6th and that is National Yo-Yo Day. So let's turn a one-piece wooden yo-yo. It's made from one block of wood, no separations, doesn't come apart. Uh, it's a pretty old-fashioned, simple, responsive type yo-yo if you're familiar with those terms, which means that as soon as you tug your hand it comes right back to you, as opposed to a non-responsive where you have to learn to bind. A whole other thing. The thing you need to think about when you're choosing a wood is you need a piece of wood that's big enough the grain that you choose has to run this way. It has to run the width of the yo-yo because the axle has to have the grain growing across it. If you do it so that the grain goes vertical in the axle, your yo-yo will snap in half really easily. Uh, you create a fragile missile, essentially. So you want to make sure that your grain runs with the axle on the yo-yo like that so that when we're turning, the axle will be here, the, f the face side, this side of the yo-yo is over here, this side of the yo-yo is over here, so you're turning end grain on right here, and this one's a little messed up, but anyway, end grain is out here, and then you got side grain through the width of the yo-yo, so you get a nice strong axle. So this is my piece of wood, this is a piece of maple, uh, you could use almost any hardwood that you want, some of the exotics work really well because they take a great polish, there's a lot of different options. I don't recommend softwoods because the axles are too fragile, but if you had, I don't know, worst you could do is experiment and find out it didn't work. But I like to use hardwoods. I like maple. I like oak. I like cherry. And um, those are probably just because that's what I have around. But we're going to use maple today. So I'm going to round this guy off a little bit, and then I will put it in the lathe, round it up, and then uh, we'll go from there. And before we get my safety gear on, it's hard to talk, I have the uh, piece of maple, kind of roughly rounded, didn't do a real great job, but I just cut the edges off on a bandsaw quick. And then uh, I will start out with a roughing gouge and just smooth this off before I start taking any measurements or doing anything like that. And um, so we'll get that going. Get my mask and uh, face shield on and we'll be good to go. time for some measurements. I'm going to put my setter line for my yo-yo right about here. Which is then where the gap will be, of course. And then I'm going to go 17 inches on either side of that line to give me a 30... Uh, 17 inches, excuse me. A 17 millimeters. 17 inches would be ginormous. Um, so 17 millimeters on either side of that line because I want a 34 millimeter wide yo-yo total. So put that there, got my caliper set to 17 millimeters. This way I know I am pretty much centered on that line. And I can then use that to go from, because I want to make sure each side is equal. If one side's heavier, things can get thrown off. Um, so I'll go ahead and darken those lines in. And I'll of course measure again as I go. Hopefully you can see not too much glare. So this is my center line. These are each side. So now the way I cut the gap is we're going to do that a little bit later. First we want to get our shape. Actually I get the gap started. I take it part the way down. But you don't want to go all the way because you get too weak in the middle. Um, to cut the gap I use, uh, this is actually a homemade I guess you'd call it a parting tool. It's actually a, a thrift store, uh, like chef knife that I cut to create a parting tool. And it's about two millimeters wide if you go across there. The gap on the yo-yo, we want to be three millimeters wide is about what I find to be ideal. Now it doesn't have to be exact, but that means that it's gonna be just a little bit less than two passes with this guy to create what I would consider to be the ideal gap.
The next phase, I'm going to do just a little bit of sanding to remove uh, some of the, the lines and whatnot. Nothing too much. This is 280 grit uh, just because I got a bunch of it. You'll notice I thinned down a little bit here, but you don't want to go too thin because uh, you got to keep enough strength in there so that you can push on it a little as you're doing this. Um, the next thing that I'll probably do with the lathe spinning and the cutting tool is I will take these down a little bit more on the outsides so that they're just thin enough to support it as I cut the center axle. You want the center axle to be about a quarter inch um, in diameter so when I get there we'll get out the calipers and, and I'll get pretty precise about getting down to about a quarter inch in the center there. One thing I should have noted before I started sanding is you never want to sand inside uh, the yo-yo, inside on the inner walls. Um, as long as you're using a decent parting tool and you're not tearing a bunch of grain, um, you want to leave it a little bit rough inside there. If you get things too smooth, your yo-yo won't grab when you give it a tug and it won't come back up on the string. So you want to leave a little bit of uh, texture in there. So you probably don't ever need to sand on the inner walls. You can just not worry about those. All right, so this is how she came off the lathe. You can see I turned just thinner and thinner on each side with the parting tool until it finally uh, snapped down to, uh, it just snapped off, which is no big deal. I was holding it, it was going slow enough. I felt very safe there and very controlled. So the next thing I have to do is just remove these little nubs, um, which I think I'll just do that with a chisel here and um, probably give it a little something to protect the yo-yo, a little piece of leather to wrap around it before I chuck it up in the vise here. You want to make sure that you're getting both halves in the vise. If you just chuck up one side and start reefing on the other, um, you could snap it at the axle pretty easy because your axle is only a quarter inch of wood right there. So make sure before you chuck it up, you got both sides in there pretty well. Then find yourself a nice chisel. Good. I think I might do just a little bit of sanding on those faces uh, to kind of remove the circles, hopefully. All right, so I spared you the details on most of the sanding. That's a little bit boring. I actually got um, a little sick of it and took it over to the belt sander and very gingerly uh, smoothed those down a little bit. I could have, of course, done a lot more on the lathe, but I didn't. So this totally worked. Things still look very even. You can see all the way around. And I got a nice smooth surface on each side. Well, now that we've got it all sanded and ready to go, it's time to put a string on it. When it comes to strings on solid wooden yo-yos, you want to get 100% cotton um, strings. And then, you know, if you don't know how to put one on, find yourself a video on that. Because um, if you use polyester or nylon, there's a chance that uh, the axle spinning directly on the string will melt your string, and that's less than ideal. And cotton feels great on your hand anyway, so cotton's nice. But anyway, there we go. We got a nice string on there. Now, if you find that you're having trouble getting the yo-yo to come back once you toss it down, uh, there's a couple of things that you can do. You can find a thicker, fatter string. There are thicker, not all strings are made equal. Um, you may have made your axle too small. If your diameter is too small, it's probably not quite as responsive. And also, your gap might be too wide if your yo-yo is not coming back to you. Um, 
so you may just have to make a new yo-yo or you can also try if you got a tool that you can get in there and put some scratches um, on the inside on that out on the inside wall there sometimes that'll be enough to help you get a little bit of grip um, or you can try to rough up the axle but you got to be careful you could make it too rough and then it won't sleep at all um, but those are a couple things you could try and uh, so anyway got a string on her let's uh, let's go see how it works The last thing to remember is the other thing that you can do if you can't get the yo-yo to come back is um, make sure you tighten it. Spin it the one way that will uh, tighten the string and put more twists in it and that'll make it tighter on the axle. Um, every time you throw it you lose about a half a twist so you may have to uh, spin it back up. So, thanks a bunch for watching. Happy National Yo-Yo Day. <laughs>